Welcome to Nain Tech's Weekly Tech News. It's March 27th, 2017. Each week I pick five or six articles that I see in my news feed that interest me and give a brief description of them to you guys. Uh, this week we've got Intel's first Optane SSD announced, the Android O operating system, uh, the developer preview is now available. We've got Corsair's, Corsair has released their new Vengeance RGB RAM. Uh, the Nokia, the new Nokia 3310, is it worth it? And the new, actually the original StarCraft is getting remastered. Intel's released their first Optane SSD. Uh, this last week, they announced that they released their first 375 gigabyte PCIe SSD uh, card, basically. Um, it's in limited quality, quantity, and it's going to cost is about $1,520. So not something that all of us are just gonna run out and purchase. Um, more, available, more availability will come later this year. Uh, it uses the Optane technology uses a more what they call a persistent solid or yeah persistent solid state memory. Uh, it was devised by Intel and Micron, uh, and they call it a 3D X print. Um, the read and write speeds aren't much faster than your current SSDs, but uh, the latency is what the big difference is between your current SSDs and what this new Optane technology is providing it's mainly more for server application type stuff most of us probably wouldn't see much of a difference in our day-to-day -day, you know gaming type of stuff uh, the uh, the difference is is the when an ssd or your platter drive is writing data it has to write a sector or um oh what was the other one so your platter drive you just has to write a sector at a time. So each time it has to write to that sector, it actually reads it, puts it into cache, and then it has to rewrite the whole sector with the new data. So it can, it can slow it down a little bit. SSDs use the same type of thing. Um, it wasn't a sector though. It uses a different type, but it's the same concept. It has to write a bit of it back. Uh, the new Optane actually allows them to write each bit, I think it was either bit or byte, individually um, instead of having to rewrite the whole section on its own. So latency as far as that, being able to read whatever they want, makes it a lot faster. So that's the big advantage. There are some other things in there, but those are the, the pretty basic definition of what the difference would be. Um, it looks like they're gonna be coming out with some, some larger sizes later this year, but all they've released so far is that 375 gigabyte one. Android O developer preview is now available. Um, it's obviously, it's only available available to develop, well, not necessarily developers, but it's it's still a preview. Um, there's still a lot of stuff that a lot of stuff that needs to be polished and finished up. But uh, for developers that are writing new software or wanting to put it on the new phones and whatever, it's it's there for them. A um, couple new things that are available on it. They're changing, they're actually going back to kind of an old style um, on your drop down for the quick settings, for like your Wi Fi and your Bluetooth and stuff. That actually gives you the option now to long press to go into settings. Um, short press just changes all the like Wi Fi on and off. When you press it, if you long press, it'll take you into the settings. And I think even if you pressed on the text below it, it'll do something different. Uh, the current, I think Android M and N don't do that. So, but the previous versions would had something comparable to that. So it's nice that they're kind of bringing that back. Um, the new notification feature, uh, when you pull down to look at your notifications, you can actually snooze the notification. Uh, so if you've got a text message and you don't have time to respond right now, you can actually snooze it for 15 minutes. I think it goes up to an hour uh, on, the, on the preview. They might change that to where you can put it in your own time or maybe even just increase, you know, respond next day or a few hours later type thing when you're off work or not busy. Uh, so it's it's nice for those notifications so you don't forget about them. Uh, let's see, what else did we have? 
Um, the settings menu has been condensed. So there's not, when you scroll through all the settings, there's not as many there. And they are adding uh, the, some of the features, uh, one of them. So if, if a feature kind of goes into, it fills into two spots, like one that's uh, how long your display is on, can, can, will actually show up under display and will also show our or under like screen settings and will also show up under like battery. So if it's kind of related to both, um, you actually can actually see it in both spots. I'm trying to remember which, which location it was in. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to find some settings. Uh, side loading uh, is now done on a per app basis. Previously, you would go into settings and you could just turn in, uh, allow me to install uh, apps from other locations and it would work for everything. Now you actually have to turn it on for every feature or every app. Uh, I can see some advantages to this, uh, you know, not as much spyware, things like that, or viruses, uh, malicious apps. Uh, they won't just install on their own. You'll be able to actually choose kind of how Windows does it, or anytime an application wants to do anything or change anything, has to approve it. So I can see it for that. It might get a little annoying if you're always installing things, but you know, security has its its pluses and minuses. Corsair's released their new Vengeance RAM. I'll post kind of a picture of what they're looking like. Um, only looks like they're available in a 2666 megahertz and a 3000 megahertz. Um, they're starting for two eight gigabyte sticks, uh, starting at 150, so not too terrible bad price for the RGB style that they have. Uh, I'm actually very tempted to sell a couple of my eight gig gigabyte sticks and put these ones in, especially for the server. I don't know if you can see this, I've got some LED stuff on my motherboard here and those RGB, the Vengeance RGB RAM would look beautiful in the server. So very tempting to sell my, the RAM that's in there and, and buy these. Uh, the new Nokia 3310 was released. If you're old enough, you remember that back in the early 2000s, Nokia had a 3310 model that was pretty much indestructible. Uh, I saw a couple of videos of guys hitting them with sledgehammers and little to no damage. I mean, the, the outside casing would pop off, uh, the front and the back, if you remember, and the battery would pop out or whatever. The thing would click back together, power on, work perfectly fine. So practically one of the most indestructible phones that we've ever seen, at least in the cell phone side of things. Um, I don't know how well the new Nokia 3310 holds up as far as durability goes. Hopefully it's just as good. But as far as current phone goes, a lot of the features are very lacking. Um, things like only 2G speeds, um, no touchscreen, two megapixel camera. Uh, you still have to type on the dial pad, which some people don't mind, but compared to on-screen typing or even one of the slide, side slide keyboard, or, phones that had the keyboard on it, still much slower. Um, and I've heard even the menu system isn't too terribly good on it. So depending on what you're looking for, if you need a phone that's completely durable because you do construction or whatever, and your phone's always getting beat up, this might be the perfect phone for you if you don't need Facebook and stuff like that on it. Um, for the rest of us, you can probably find a better phone for the 50 or so dollars this one's gonna be going for. Last thing I want to talk about today, and my most exciting, to, at least to me, um, the original StarCraft that came out in 1998 is getting completely remastered. Uh, it's going to be, the biggest thing on it is it's actually going to have resolutions up to 4K, or the ultra high definition 4K, in both campaign and multiplayer modes. Um, they're going to completely update the soundtrack or remaster it. I don't think you're going to be changing it from the from the way they were talking, uh, just remastering it, the sound, stuff like that, so that they're, um, I guess, better better mastering. Uh, also, the briefings and the dialogues are going to be, I don't want to say revamped would probably be the best way to explain it. Not that they're going to be changing them too much, but they're probably going to update the, you know, the quality of them, clean up the sound, sound effects, things like that. So, uh, they're also going to be adding a zoom zoom capability where you can zoom all the way out to like battle cruiser 
battle cruiser view or you can zoom all the way in to look at the you know the wings of the mutalisk so nice addition to that kind of what starcraft 2 has where you can zoom in and out and look or watch battles happening from different views uh, base blizzard says that they're modernizing it because they want this game to go for another 20 years or more they want people to enjoy it it's kind of a one-of-a-kind game there hasn't been many games like it as far as popularity and and whatnot uh, really since so they're wanting they're revamping it uh, i did hear that they are looking at releasing the original starcraft and i think this is just the original not the remastered but they are going to be offering the original starcraft and brood war package uh, for free sometime here soon uh, maybe to build up a little bit of hype for it before they release the remastered uh, i did hear that they took it off of their site which they were selling it for i think both pack both of them for 14.99 15 bucks so they took that off probably in in prep for uh, releasing it for free to everybody so big news from blizzard on that i'm a big starcraft fan so i'm excited about that i'm hoping no oh, they're also remastering it so that it works better in windows 7 8.1 and windows 10 uh, so obviously we can keep playing in all of those uh, operating systems i believe i also said uh, said mac os as well so big news from them very excited see you next week